Yes, it's finally here. A legitimate 103 pattern AK with a side folding stock and the 5.5 millimeter trunnion. Yes, the Kalashnikov USA KR-103 SFS. The official AK of guys that were too young to buy an arsenal at a good price and too smart to beta test for other companies. It is the technical data package built legitimate clone of a 103 minus the giggle switch. And nothing on this gun is cheap, neither in the monetary or the qualitative sense of the word. It is just a well-built gun, but it is not cheap, like I said. So is the Kalashnikov USA KR-103 SFS worth the hype, worth the money, worth all the time we've waited for it? Let's take a closer look and find out. The Kalashnikov USA KR-103 SFS is a semi-automatic clone of the Russian AK-103 rifle. Despite its appearance, it is 100% AK under the hood, meaning that the KR-103 is a long-stroke, piston-driven, locked-breech, magazine-fed rifle chambered in 7.62x39. This also means that it has all the pros and cons associated with an AK, meaning shooters can expect flawless reliability, top-notch durability, and a little more felt recoil than a direct impingement carbine like the AR-15. But before I get too far ahead of myself, let's start at the muzzle and work our way back so we don't miss any of the noteworthy features on this rifle because there are a ton of them. Speaking of that muzzle, the included AK-74 style two-port break is the first clue that this is not your standard AKM rifle. The muzzle itself isn't actually threaded, but the combination gas block front sight tower assembly features an extended portion threaded to M24 by 1.5 right-handed. So your standard slant break won't fit this rifle without an adapter, but you really shouldn't want it to anyway because the included break is vastly more effective and objectively a lot better looking. Now behind this threaded portion, the gas block features an integral front sight post, which is adjustable for both windage and elevation, but does require a special tool to do so. Beneath and behind this block, the KR-103 SFS features a 16.33 inch cold hammer forged chrome lined barrel ideal for shooting both standard and corrosive ammunition. The chrome lining also benefits the rifle by making the barrel much more resistant to both rust and wear. Now attached to the bottom of the barrel is a combination bayonet lug and cleaning rod retainer. Further back, the barrel features a collar that retains the front of the bottom handguard, while the rear tab of the handguard fits snugly beneath the barrel trunnion. Above the barrel, the KR-103 SFS features the correct AK-100 series 90 degree gas block that also functions as an upper handguard retainer. And speaking of handguards, both the upper and lower are built from black polymer and feature a steel heat shield inside to prevent them from melting during extended shooting sessions. Now behind the gas block and the barrel, the KR-103 SFS features a forged barrel trunnion that also acts as a rear sight housing. Unlike the front sight, the rear sight is only adjustable for elevation and features markings designating the zero distance from either point blank out to a very optimistic 1,000 meters. Before you comment on that, yes, hitting a target at 1,000 yards with iron sights with an AK is exceptionally difficult. Now behind the trunnion and the rear sight, the KR-103 SFS features a proper smooth dust cover and a receiver that features the correct rivet style for a legit AK-100 series. It also has the catch for the folding stock and the receiver itself has magazine dimples to reduce magazine wobble with slightly out of spec magazines. Now, speaking of which, I tried every magazine in my collection in the KR-103 SFS and they all locked up, fed, extracted, everything flawlessly. But more on that in a moment. Now, just behind the magazine well, the KR-103 SFS features your standard magazine release paddle that in testing was perfect. It was neither too stiff nor too loose, fairly easy to actuate, and was only a little bit stubborn on Korean magazines, which, let me get to that right now. The gun ships with a single KCI 30 round steel magazine. And as far as steel magazines go, this is probably my second least favorite version. But in all fairness, in testing, I never had any malfunctions related to that magazine. But since you're spending around $1,400 on this gun, I think they should at least include a proper AK-103 style magazine. Yes, they make them. No, they don't include them with a the rifle. Why? I have no idea. All right, now back to the rifle. On the other side of its receiver, the KR-103 utilizes a standard AK-47 style safety lever that is both extremely positive and large enough to actuate with gloved hands. Just behind this is the folding stock release button and a Russian pattern 5.5 millimeter rear trunnion, as well as a black polymer pistol grip and black polymer folding stock that features a spring-loaded release on the butt pad. Now, as far as inside the gun, it all pretty much looks like what you'd expect 
with the exception of the fact that the bolt itself features the thinner stemmed AK-100 series style. But other than that, if you know AKs, you know this gun. Now let's get back to the magazines for a second and compatibility. I tested the KR-103 SFS with a wide variety of both magazines and accessories. And while AR shooters might find this pointless, AK guys are definitely familiar with the fact that not all AKs work with all accessories, including magazines. And no, I'm not speaking about the difference between oddball pattern guns like Yugoslavian NPAPs, but standard AKM or AK-100 series guns can sometimes struggle with certain mags or even optic mounts. That would take me a full minute to actually list them all. Here is a physical list of every magazine I tested that had no issues whatsoever. As far as optic mounts, it's a much shorter list, so I'll just list it right now. I had no issues with a standard Arsenal Picatinny mount, a Midwest Industries Picatinny mount, uh, the old Russian commercial ones from Ismesh, Belarusian POSP 4X scopes, uh, mounts from RS Regulate, and even my Venezuelan PKA reflex sight. Everything installed fine and held zero flawlessly. All right, now that we know the gun is compatible with everything and we have a pretty good idea of all its features, let's get to what you actually came here for, performance. So paramount to any firearm test is reliability. And in this regard, the KR-103 SFS was nearly flawless. I fired a total of 1,850 rounds of ammo through the Kalashnikov USA gun, and I only encountered a single malfunction a failure to chamber during a shooting match when I rested the gun, and all my weight, on the magazine to stabilize it. And other than that single malfunction, the KR-103 SFS has performed flawlessly. As far as accuracy, I'll be honest, I didn't do any bench shooting with the gun, but I did take it out to a friend's property and shot steel man-sized targets out to 500 yards with no issues. And for me, that's more valuable information than mechanical accuracy grouping. Now lastly, I want to talk about the longevity of the rifle. Only a few short years ago, most shooters never bothered checking their AK's carrier, bolt, or chamber for soft steel or signs of mushrooming. But the introduction of several substandard American-made AK's has made this a must for shooters looking to really push their weapon's limits. That said, I'm happy to report that there were no visible signs of damage or peening on the bolt itself, though the tail of the carrier did show mild signs of wear and peening. But given the fact that I've run about 400 rounds of the 1850 rounds suppressed through this gun, that's not really surprising. The good news is the amount of wear shown on the tail is neither alarming nor a cause for concern. It was fairly mild and I don't expect it to get much worse. Though if you're really concerned and you bought one of these guns, you can always reshape the hammer, but I would personally just invest in either a Rack 1 trigger group or one from ALG. Ultimately for me, the KR-103 SFS is 1000% worth the money because I have seen the prices on arsenals and there is no earthly way I'm paying $3,000 for a Russian AK unless it has a you know rock and roll switch. And if you want a higher testament to the fact that I own this gun, it is the only American-made AK in my collection, which is over a dozen at this point. And that ranges from things like Norinco, Polytech, uh, actual converted Saigas, as well as Egyptian Mahdi's. Like you name it, I got it. And this is the only time I've ever been tempted in any way, shape or form to purchase an American-made AK. Because I know we are not getting side-folding imported AK, at least in the foreseeable future. So ultimately, with an MSRP of around $1,400, it is not a cheap gun, but if you want a 100 series AK and you want it to be as close as humanly possible without paying a specialized builder to build one for you, the KR-103 SFS is your ticket. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Ammo Land TV. And as always, I will catch you guys on the flip side.